Real Estate Estate Planning. Have you planned for your loved ones? Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Wee Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to discuss on real estate estate planning and why you should pay attention to. I'm going to discuss on lasting power of attorney or IPA for short. I'm also going to share the implication of dying without a will and dying with a will. I will also share three meaningful case studies regarding estate planning that you can take reference on. A big disclaimer here, I'm not legal trained and neither am I a professional on legal matters. Please seek professional advice on matters pertaining to estate planning. However, in this video, I would like to share with everyone more details pertaining to estate planning from a property perspective. Let us go into the detail. Firstly, let us talk about lasting power of attorney. The LPA is a legal document which allows a person who is at least 21 years old of age, donor, to voluntarily appoint one person, donee, to make decision and act on his behalf if he loses mental capacity one day. A donee can be appointed to act in the two broad areas of personal welfare and property and affair matters. This brings us back to the Yang Yi saga. By the way, he has already been released from prison and deported back to his home country. The benefits of an LPA enable a person to appoint a trusted person who is reliable and competent to act in his best interest. So please go to the Office of Public Guardians and follow the steps to do it. I will leave the links in the description below. The property where we hold on to them when we are alive is also known as real estate because they are real to us. In the event that we pass on, our asset will commonly be known as our estate. If you pass away without leaving a will, everything you own, your estate will be distributed according to Singapore Interstate Succession Act. The rules are as follow. If you are married, your estate will automatically go to your spouse if you don't have children or parents. If you are married with children, your spouse will get half the children get the other half in equal portions. If you are childless and your parents have passed on, your estate will automatically go to your surviving siblings in equal shares. Here, I have a very interesting case study to test you. A couple meet, get married, and decided to buy a matrimonial home under joint tenancy. Sometime later, they have no children yet. They decided to go on a vacation. Unfortunately, a freak accident occurred and their plane crashed and both died. Question, who get a house? Well, according to Section 30 of the Civil Law Act, the older spouse is presumed to have died first. In the case, since the husband is older, the law presumes that he passed on first. According to the right of survivorship, the house therefore belongs entirely to the wife. As the wife has died, the house is now to be distributed with the rest of her estate. Without a will, the Interstate Succession Act applies. According to the Act, all of the wife estate, including the house, pass on to the wife parents as the couple has no children yet. If the wife parents are not alive, then the estate pass on to her siblings. Note, the husband's surviving parents will not inherit even a single cent. This only shows the importance of having a will to avoid any unforeseen situation down the road. When an estate is distributed by the Interstate Succession Act, the legal procedures is known as letter of administration. The administrator is appointed by the court instead of the deceased. It will cost more and be more time consuming. If you want to take control of your estate, please do a will. Your estate will be distributed as per your instruction in your will. When an estate is distributed, by the will, the legal procedure is known as grant of probate. The executor of the will is appointed by the deceased instead of the court. It generally costs less. A simple will starts from $500 to a more complex one costs 2000 plus. It is less time consuming and you have more control over your own estate. Living without a will is living without a plan. Living without a plan is living and living in responsibility. Have a will can be seen as doing advanced tax planning. Take note, giving away real estate will entail ABSD. 
We will discuss more regarding this in the next video. In a nutshell, let me share how IPA, dying without a will and having a will is important in the following case. Husband and wife bought a property under joint tenancy. They took a mortgage loan from the bank. The husband got into a traffic accident and lapsed into a coma for six months before dying eventually. Here, what are the legal issues? Can the wife take over the property straight away when the husband is in a coma? What if the wife cannot afford to service the mortgage installment? Will she be forced to sell? Pause this video for a while and think about it before I review the solutions. The husband go into coma. Is there a LPA to manage the husband account? If not, the wife cannot do anything until the husband pass on. If yes, the wife can go to the bank and manage his affair. Can a wife refinance the loan? Does the husband have any term or mortgage insurance? If yes, then they can continue to keep the property. If not, the wife has to sell the property. The husband eventually died. If got will, the wife will apply for grant or probate to manage the affair. Estate will be split accordingly to his will. If there is no will, the wife has to apply for a letter of administration which will take longer and more expensive. Two friends, A and B, join hands to buy an investment property under tenancy in common in equal share. They took a housing loan jointly with a bank. Shortly, A died due to an accident. Question you may like to ask, friend A got will or no will? Can friend B continue to pay the mortgage installment? Can friend A beneficiary continue to help to pay while awaiting the court order? Will friend B be stuck? This is a classic example of a messy handover in an event of unforeseen circumstances due to an investment property bought jointly with a friend. This is something you would like to take note on and seek legal advice before buying a property other than your spouse. Please take note that CPF funds are excluded from your will. You have to go to CPF website to do a nomination. CPF nomination means you decide who receives your CPF saving and how much each person gets when you die. You can go online and nominate, review or edit your nominee. The same applies to most insurance policies. Most insurance policies will require you to nominate someone as a nominee in an event you pass on so that they can claim the policy money. Here, I hope this video will be useful to you. I have split the video into two parts as this is too long. The next part will focus on inheritance properties and setting up a trust for your family. If you have enjoyed this video, please help me to give the thumbs up and subscribe to this video if you have not done so, so that I can achieve my 1,000 subscribers soon. See you soon and goodbye.